Hello and welcome. This video is covering the basics of how stock returns are calculated, how you are accumulating them and how you can use log returns. I will start with a simple spreadsheet and in the end I'm showing you how I'm doing it in Python. So let's get started. What you are seeing here is just an ex-employee stock price on a particular day. Before we are calculating returns, why are they necessary? They enable to compare stocks on a different scale. So let's say you want to compare the performance of two stocks, one is worth $100 and one is worth less than $1. Not possible if you are not taking the relative changes into account. So let's start with creating a return column here. And the formula for calculating returns is pretty straightforward. Just take the prices of today, subtract the price of the day before and divide that by the price the day before. As we don't have the price the day before day one, we are starting here at day two. So again, the formula is the price as of today minus the price the day before divided by the price the day before. Two percent. OK, now this is important. You can shortcut this formula. For that, you just need some basic understanding of fractions. So you could write this equation in this way. Just take B3 divided by B2. So we're taking B3 divided by B2. And subtract B2 divided by B2 here. And we are ending up with the same return, 2%. Now you see that B2 divided by B2 is just the same as 1. And this is the only reason why we are subtracting a 1 after dividing. So this is the same. As you see, 2%. Okay, so let's pull that down. And now we have the relative changes of the stock or the returns on this particular day. As a side note, this could also be another time scale. So that could be hours, minutes, seconds, but also months, years, and so on. Now I'm interested in the following question. What is the return from day one until day five? And there are two ways to calculate that. First one is the simple way. Just use the exact same formula as we did before. So let's write that down from day one to day five. And we are just taking the price on day five divided by the price on day one and subtract a one. So we have 10%. The second one is accumulating the returns. And some of you ask, why aren't we just summing up the returns? And I'm showing you that this wouldn't work. So let's define wrong way of accumulating returns. And now we are just taking the sum of our returns. And you see that this is not the same as this one here. Okay, let's take a look at the right way to accumulate returns. Therefore, we are creating a column here, cumulative return. And the formula is defined in the following way. Take one plus the return as of today times, so we are taking a product here, times one plus the cumulative return on the prior day and we are subtracting a one after that. Now you see we are getting 2%, which makes sense as this is just equivalent to the return as we have only one day, right? So the basic calculation again would just be this price divided by this price minus one. Okay, now let's pull the formula down and you see that on day five, you're getting the right 10%. Now let's take a look at log returns. Therefore, we are again creating a column log return and the log return is just the natural log of one plus the return. So we can just use the LN formula and provide one plus the return. And we have the log returns when we are pulling that down. So you see they are similar, but slightly different. And now I'm showing you why are they so handy and people love using them. Therefore, I'm taking the sum of those returns, right? And I'm ending up with this value. These are again the summed up log returns. Now I can use the counter function of the natural log, 
which is the natural exponential function. So we are using the exp function, apply that on that and subtract one. And now you see we are getting the right 10%. So we don't need the painful product functions as you just saw and can just add up the returns. This is also referred to that log returns are time additive. Pretty nice, right? Now another cool feature which is relevant in distribution properties of stock returns is the symmetry of log returns. Therefore, let's take an example. I have three days, day one, day two, day three here. And again, a stock price. So let's say we have on day one, we have 150, 200, and on day three, we are going back to 150, right? So the asset is rising by $50 and then is dropping by $50 the next day. Now let's apply returns to that. So we can just copy paste here the return formula and pull that down. And you see that these returns aren't symmetric. It is rising by 33% and then dropping by 25%, even though the stock was, was rising and falling by the same amount, $50, right? Now let's take a look at the log returns. So I'm just copy pasting that from here. Oh, we have to apply that on the return, of course. And now let's pull that down. And you see, the return is symmetric now. Pretty awesome, right? And yeah, that's it for the spreadsheet. I will link some resources for further reading to have a better understanding of the why behind this. So I hope this was helpful until now. Be kind invited to provide me feedback. Okay, last but not least, the Python implementation of the shown concept. So I'm not going into details here. I'm just showing you how I'm doing that. I'm importing Y-Finance to get stock price data from the internet and NumPy I need for the natural log and the natural uh, exponential function. Okay, so first of all, I'm just pulling Tesla price data for the last, let's say, four or five days. So let's just start um, 5th of May here. So we are ending up with the data frame containing prices for Tesla, right? And to get the returns of Tesla, I'm using the close column. You can also use the adjusted close column and apply a pandas function pct underscore change to that. And with that, I'm getting the returns. So we can create a variable here and apply the pct change function to the close column here. pct change. And now I'm getting the returns of Tesla, right? And the next step is to accumulate those returns. And first of all, we are doing the basic way. So we are um, dividing this price by this price and subtract a one. And I'm cheating a bit here as I want to speed up the process. I'm just using DF close and divide that by DF close and shift by uh, three rows here and subtract a one. And with that, I'm getting the cumulative return on this day, right? But you can also do that by hand. You will get the exact same result or by using an iLog function or whatsoever. Okay, so this is the cumulative return from the 4th until the 7th of May here, right? Now, what I'm usually doing is I'm using a cumulative product function. Product because I've just explained that in the spreadsheet. Right, so I'm creating a variable here, cumulated return or cumulative return rather, but let's just keep it like so. And now I'm just applying the same concepts. I'm using one plus the returns and apply a cumulative product function and after what sub subtract a one. And with that, I'm getting the cumulative returns here as you see here, right? So as you see on the seventh, we have the same value here. Makes sense, right? Okay, so last but not least, log returns. So to get log returns is pretty straightforward. You're just using NumPy, take the log and then provide one plus the returns. And then you're ending up with the log returns. 
So as a comparison, these were the real returns in quotation marks. So you see slightly different, but similar, right? Okay, now we can use a summing up function to get the summed up log returns. And you can do so by using, let's just copy paste this nine again. And now we can use the cumulative sum. And now you see we are getting the summed up log returns here. And this value is slightly different, right? Let's pull the other one, cumulated red. You see that we have a slightly different value here. And if you remember why that is, because we didn't apply the counter function yet. And this is what I'm doing right now. So I'm using np.exp, take this as an argument and subtract a one afterwards. And now you see we are getting the exact same cumulative return as we did here with this way. Yeah, and that's it for this video. I hope you liked this. I hope you could extract value out of that. Be kind of invited to drop me some feedback. Drop me a comment if anything was unclear. And yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing the upcoming videos.